In this podcast, I'm going to talk about blood types. Blood typing wasn't that big a deal back in the day because when we were cavemen, it didn't really exist this whole idea of transfusing blood from one person to another. But with modern medicine, it's actually become a really big deal. Now, you should know this. In humans, the ones that I'll talk about in this podcast is going to be the ABO blood typing. And another one I'll talk about is the RH factor. Uh, but no. Well, basically, we're talking about proteins that are found on the surface of our blood cells or our erythrocytes. And so, basically, if we're looking at the ABO system, if you are type A blood, which I happen to be type A blood, that means that you're going to have an A protein or a specific protein on the surface of your blood. If you are type B blood, then you're going to have a B protein on the surface of your blood. And this is just a comic version. They're going to be really, really tiny. You wouldn't be able to see them. They're just little proteins on the surface or glycoproteins that are found on the surface of the blood. So if you think about it, what if you're type AB blood? Well, basically that means that you have both types of proteins. And if you're type O, that means that you have none of these specific proteins that are found on your blood. And so um, each of these have arisen through our evolutionary history, but they actually are really important when we're trying to move blood from one person to another. And that's because of our immune response. And so if you're type A blood, and so let's remember that that's that purple kind of a protein, that pointy purple protein, well, basically you're going to have that type of blood, but you're going to have antibodies for the other type, the B antibody we call that. And the reason why is that you have antibodies for every shape possible except the shape that you actually have. And so we're not going to have purple antibodies, but we're going to have these B antibodies, and that's just because we don't have that B protein around. Likewise, if we look at type B blood, it's going to have the B proteins, but it would be silly for us to have those B antibodies because it would just simply attack our own blood. But instead, we're going to have the type A antibodies. If we look at somebody who's type AB blood, well, since they have both of these antigens or both of these proteins on their surface, A and B, then we really wouldn't want to have any other antibodies because, again, they would attack our blood. And then finally, if you're type O, basically if you're type O, since you don't have either of these proteins, then you're going to have antibodies that match up that specific shape. And so again, the antibodies are there simply to protect our body against invasion or against invaders. And so now let's look at type A. Let's say you're type A blood. And so we said we got the purple pointy proteins. You're going to have the B antibodies. Let's say that we give that person type O blood. Well, what's going to happen? Well, since there are no proteins on its surface, nothing will happen. So it's OK to transfer type O blood to somebody who's type A. Nothing happens. But let's say we give them type B blood. Well, that type B blood is going to have the B proteins. And so basically, those B antibodies are going to grab onto it. They're going to attack that. And we could die as a result of that. And that's why it's important that when we're giving somebody blood transfusion, we make sure that we type their blood because our, otherwise our antibodies are going to attack it. Let's say we've got now type B blood. Again, we've got the A antibodies. Let's say we give that person A blood. Well, you probably can figure this out. Basically, all of those antibodies are going to glom onto that type A blood. And so we could die as a result of that. Now let's look at somebody who has type AB blood. Well, let's give them type A blood. Well, since they have no antibodies, at least for this protein, nothing would happen. Or if we give them type B blood, nothing will happen. Or we give them type O blood, nothing will happen. And so we like to think of AB as the universal recipient. In other words, it can get blood from any other type, and it's going to be fine. But if we look at type O blood, type O blood, since it has the other antibodies, if we throw anything with a protein, especially like AB blood, you can see that all the antibodies are going to grab onto that. Quickly, the RH factor. RH is simply another set of proteins. This is a little simpler to do genetics problems with RH factor because you either have it or you don't. Either you're RH positive and you have these RH factors. RH came from, uh, they did some early studies on the rhesus monkey to identify this protein. RH negative, you don't have it. And so what antibodies is an RH positive going to have? Well, neither. It's going to have none of those antibodies. But if you're RH negative, then you're going to have those RH plus antibodies. And so if you're RH negative, then you're going to be uh, homozygous negative. So which is dominant? Dominant is going to be the RH positive. And so if we have a parent, uh, two parents who are RH positive, it's something you really want to be aware of. 
Now, if we've got a mom right here, and let's say she's Rh negative, and then we have a dad who's Rh positive, is it conceivable that they could have an offspring who ends up being Rh positive? Well, for sure. And so basically what happens is during the first pregnancy, nothing really happens because we're only sending antibodies in one direction from mom to, to baby. But during childbirth, there's a lot of blood that gets mixed. And so basically what can happen is during subsequent pregnancies, now mom is going to start to build up a lot of these Rh plus antibodies. And so during the second pregnancy, she could actually be sending antibodies that could damage that fetus. Now, if we know this, which we do in developed countries, then we can simply uh, give, them, give her a chemical during, I think, the 28th week of gestation, and then we can suppress that immune response. But it's really important that we note that. And so now we finally get to this last big chart, uh, and it's got some really cool information on it. If you look here, it's got X problems, and so I hope that's helpful.